Um, so in those days, for a few days, I take in practice. Try to be more and more practical mm -hmm. in what you say. And I realize many things that arise from this point. And my English is a little confused, so I'm sorry if that. So, I asking myself a lot of questions and try to feel the soul. And sometimes I ask questions and I, I, uh, I have a voice in my head, so I said, mm, no. Try to feel. And, you, and I feel my heart, maybe. I feel something here that beats. Sometimes it's like, no, like, little, no. Sometimes it's like, yes. And also when... That's the soul. That's how it's experienced, as an impulse. Some people experience it as like yes, no, some as a no, yes, but it's like that. You're describing, you're describing how the experience is. Okay. <laughs> nice. You are now self-realized. I pronounce you self-realized. <laughs> now it's a matter of deepening the experience. It, that's exactly what it is. It's, <laughs> it's nothing bigger than that. It's the soul, that's the master. It's exactly how it, what you've described. I mean, each one has it differently because it's also depending on how a person's body is also. But that's what it is. Now you, the, the thing is that that's the beginning of the sadhana. Now it's about living more and more in that, in that yes. That's what it is, really. Like, it's amazing that you have this experience. Yeah, it's been very, very amazing. It's powerful, isn't it? It's like a, it's like you, you don't have to worry anymore. It takes charge of everything, you know. Mm, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> well, because you don't want to listen to it. That's the yeah. worry. There's also ways, you know, by which to be aware of how to quiet down the ego in those moments when that... Yeah, and to go with it fearlessly, fearlessly, fearlessly. You know, people have spent 10, 20 and 30 years sitting in meditation in the Himalayas for enlightenment, when the, the cosmic soul is actually individualized here. And this is where that, that focus if it were, would actually re reach you to, to what you've experienced. Then you build up the strength, the shakti, the sahan shakti, the ability to bear what comes, the ability to move with the truth fearlessly, whatever anyone says and thinks and whatever society or anyone, the truth is the master always, 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 always. I remember in the beginning of this, when I started to speak about this, that there was that much resistance. Sometimes I would sit in a satsang where there were 30 people and they all literally were angry with me because I was saying things that was just questioning that entire enlightenment process, neo advaitin practices, basically... And the shakti to do that just comes in the surrender. No, don't be afraid, fearless, in surrender, go with it, say what you have to say, whatever happens. Because it can be dangerous in a subcontinent like this, it's not a joke. I mean, one has to be very, very solid. And where does that solidity come from? Not from thinking about it, oh, what shall I do? It's just, you are the master, you are the, you are the, this is just an instrument, just an, the instrument will say what it has to say. Impulsed by you, impulsed by you, impulsed by you, in surrender, in surrender. And that's how the, the, the fearlessness builds up, you know, to, 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 to 
confront this huge subcontinent. What is being said here is contradicting a lot of very well-established practices which are sometimes a couple of thousand years old or more. That, that strength to do that comes from that surrender, so that's the next step now, now you feel it, now as much as possible, more and more and more you go with that, fearlessly. Fearlessness is the main thing, just to be fearless. Whatever happens, I go with the truth, if you feel it clearly. Because it's so precise, like how to not go with it. And you develop that fearlessness also by, you know, in, in, in over here, and as has happened, as I teach the students who are long-term students of mine, through, actually through seva, you know, mainly through seva, doing seva, 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 because that seva just keeps you solid and present. But would you want to give up this experience? Would you, would you want to turn the clock back and no. not know this? No. Like it's no, just I unbelievable. Mean, yeah. And I mean you've come here like, what, twenty times or fifteen times or something you've heard me speak? Yeah, even less, I think. Yeah? You were there in Tiru, I remember you. Yes, three times in Tiru huh? and seven. Now it's about bending, bending, bending. And if you can do seva... Yeah, this is what I would... Seva. I feel now like I want to do seva. And to me like in one day, two days ago. It'll, it'll happen because if you've had the solidity of that experience, the experience will propel you into seva. Like that, that... Because it's just like you realize that this is an instrument that this is an instrument, it's not this big I and separate from this and who am I. That's like, it's over, past tense. It's, this is an instrument of the truth and that's what it is. Of course, in the beginning you'll have this experience that you've, that you've lost the attachments to things and you know, <coughs> but you also have this m amazing responsibility for what is emerging from this body you take responsibility for it, you know. And I think that now more and more teachers, spiritual masters, they will be speaking about this more and more and more, like concretely, not just in, in nebulous descriptions but precise stuff, because spirituality is material, spirit is matter. There is no... It's not like two sides of the same coin. It is the same thing.